the heat and the climactic warming that our reefs are facing is one of those larger threats. My dissertation research and honestly the research um, undertaken by the entire lab has a lot to do with combating the effects of climate change. We largely focus on reefs in Florida, um, but we've also sort of expanded to looking at reefs internationally and trying to understand uh, what drives corals there versus corals here. Uh, we experienced a pretty unprecedented amount of thermal stress affecting our oceans and that resulted in what was a pretty widespread bleaching event. So a lot of our ongoing research as we go into this summer with already unprecedented temperatures is looking not only at the impact of these temperatures, but the strain that these repetitive events can put on our reefs. Our lab had the opportunity to work with and collaborate with multiple people in Honduras, um, driven by these reports of reefs that had withstood the bleaching event of last summer, and specifically um, these large patches of Acropora palmata, which was the species that was largely the hardest hit here in Florida in the Keys. These, the species used to be foundational in Florida. We used to have those kinds of dense thickets, uh, forests even, of these coral, and they used to produce these long barrier stretches of reef that would protect our coastlines. Um, but due to a repetitive stress events such as disease and temperature, they've really been hard hit in Florida and it's become an extraordinarily endangered species. So it was truly magnificent to see the reefs in Honduras, in Tela, and to see this species still thriving, sort of against all odds. We conducted an experiment to assess the thermal tolerance of the Alcorn coral. We uh, took samples, just little tissue biopsies of uh, over 150 corals to see, sort of to get a sense of their genetics and their symbiote communities. And then we also were lucky enough to collect colonies of three different species that will hopefully be able um, to be used for further study and potentially even uh, manage breeding and spawning. But there is, I think, something special to these reefs that maintain their resilience while others suffer more drastic effects. And if we can understand that, um, by studying the corals themselves, or even by conducting experiments that involve, as you said, coral matchmaking, um, that provides us with an excellent opportunity to see whether there are benefits to having parents that are thermally tolerant, disease resistant, come from a different area, even a different country. The corals that we have in Florida have already been shown to have withstood decades of other stressors, such as overfishing, um, runoff, pollution, but when we see summers like last summer keep happening, it's difficult to think about what that could mean for our reefs long term if they just keep getting hit by all angles like this. We're all sort of holding our breath uh, to see what this year will bring and people in my lab are already starting to mobilize to take data while we can. So we're already starting to canvas our reefs. Uh, and get a sense of our pre-bleaching conditions with the hope, perhaps, that this year won't be as bad as last year, uh, but we certainly have to stay prepared. And it does really add to that sense of urgency of needing to understand and potentially identify solutions to some of these problems. It's difficult to seek exact solutions, but I think what we're trying to do is just advance the general level of understanding to identify perhaps what the weak points are and to strive to identify potentially what some of the coral strengths are in these reefs, these sort of refuges. And if studying reefs in other countries and other places and comparing them to our own native reefs can accomplish that, then that's more than the goal.